If you have awkward, messy source data and you need to clean it up so you can produce really nice, simple reports, then keep watching. I'm going to show you how to do this. Once you've set it up, we can simply add some new data, or in this case, let's replace March's data, drop it into our source file, and save this. Then we'll go into our report file and simply click Refresh All. And within a few seconds, your interactive chart will have updated. I've got a last refresh date and time. So, here's how I did this. So the problem with this source data is across the columns are the years and the months and also whether the data is actual or budget. So to save time I got a pre-built Power Query calendar which I've saved in my templates folder. I'm going to open that up. This has got a little query that tells me the last time a report was refreshed and it's also got in it a pre-built calendar that's already sorted. So let's take a quick look. So here we go, we've got a calendar table and I've already put in a measures table for storing my calculations in. So a little trick, we're going to click on our source file and click this copy path button. That gives you a full path to that file. I can now use get data from file from workbook. I can simply paste the path. I just need to remove the little double quotes at the start and finish. And here I'm into the file. There's only one sheet in that file and I'm going to edit it. And now we're in the Power Query window. Okay, this is where all the good stuff happens. There we can see we've got three rows. Actual and budget are in the third row. Years in the first row, months in the second row. So what are we going to do? Firstly, watch out for this little trap, the change type step. We need to get rid of that. The trick, transpose. We're going to flip the data around into nice columns. So now we have those first three rows and now the first three columns. And now we can actually merge those together. And we can use any separator we want, but I'll just use the pipe separator. And here's my merged column. Now I can transpose back and I've got a single row with those elements in. We then use first row as headers. Again, that little annoying change type step needs to be removed. Just change the headings. If you want to change the data types as well, I'll change these to text, you can just hold control and now unpivot other columns. Such a good feature. We can now split this column apart using that pipe separator and we're into three columns. So we've got a nice clean column telling us whether this is actual or budget and we'll use that column later in one of our formulas. Then we're going to use the amazing column from examples to turn these two columns into a date. Just type in date. And now we type in what's corresponding to those cells in that same row. So 2018, JUL, 01 for the first of every month. Sometimes it doesn't get it quite right, so you need to give it another example. Let's go for 2018 org 01. And there we can see always check this formula. Yeah, it's really important to check that that's doing what you intend it to do. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I can just click OK. Now just to convert that to a date. I've got some errors because there are some total rows. So I can just filter out the total rows by right clicking on the word total text filter 
does not equal and as you can see it just puts in the formula does not equal total now I could change my date to month end date as well using a right click transform but I'll just skip that for now so here we go we got the data the real trick is that transpose bit at the start and then merging the cells transposing them back and splitting the cells so that's how you handle those awkward triple row headings I'm just going to load this data to the data model and let's go and take a look that nice clean data is now ready for us to build our model I'm just going to hook it up to our calendar so I'm going to drag date up to date it's like doing a VLOOKUP but that could be like 10 million VLOOKUPs just done just like that instantly it's absolutely awesome so here we go we have now got our data we've built our little model by linking it to the calendar I'm just going to insert a pivot table and by default because I've loaded something to the data model I've now got the data model is my default option and we're going to add a simple calculation now to my measures table so power pivot measures new measure let's call it spend and it's we can control zoom in with our mouse wheel to make the formula a bit easier to read and I'm just going to sum up the cleaned up data value column quick bit of default formatting and we're good so here is spend and the beauty of power pivot and the data model is we can now slice and dice this by anything from our calendar and also anything from our actual data source so I've got up my colors I can put my month in my columns and here's it automatically sorted by fiscal year because I have already sorted my template by fiscal year now we really want to start adding some more complicated measures like actual budget variance and start building up a suite of metrics that we can analyze so for actuals remember we've got this column that tells us whether the values are actual or budget so I'm going to use the calculate function based on spend where the cleaned up data actual or budget column equals the word actual so that's basically a bit like a sum ifs it's only giving you the data where the value is actual in that column quick bit of formatting and I'm just going to copy this formula as well because I'm going to repeat it for budget so with the budget formula it'll be where the actual budget column equals budget so let's just go back in and do that just change this to budget load that one in and here we've got actual and budget so that spend form value isn't really meaningful so now we've got actual and budget let's do a variance and once you've got these simple building blocks more complicated measures become easier it's simply actual minus budget that's it and just for good measure why not add variance percentage and we will use the function divide now divide would be great if this was in Excel because divide handles dividing by zero by just leaving a blank rather than giving you a horrible div zero error and the beauty of it is we don't need other measures for that variance percentage to work we don't need them to be on the screen and here we go and now we can add something like month against this so we've got color and month and the percentage there about let's just drag out color to make it simpler for our chart here's a, let's pick a line chart now when you see this it means your data's flipped around the wrong way so we go design switch row and columns and that just flips the pivot table around quick bit of formatting let's get rid of these right click hide all fields and we'll add a quick slicer so right click add slicer so that we can now slice and dice our chart and control our chart based on color so as we click one of the color buttons that impacts the pivot table the, imp 
pivot table is linked to the chart. Let me just turn the headers off on this. And we'll just reorganize a few things, turn off the grid lines. Just move with this over here a second. Get this out of the way. Okay, drag this up a little bit. If you drag up a little bit, you see you get a flat line along the bottom. Little trick there. It looks like they're tabs now. So I can click on red, orange. Nice interactive chart. So all we have to do now is just replace our source file, click refresh all, all this report updates, that Power Query transformation all takes place and our charts are done. I hope you learned a few little tips and tricks there. Follow us at Access Analytic. I look forward to hearing from you and good luck.